welcome, dear friends, to Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with one more, the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth was a book, is a book, published originally in Portuguese in Brazil in 1961. Several spirit authors came through Chico Xavier, Valdo Vieira, two mediums. When Chico Xavier was living in the city of Uberaba, yes, in the state of Minas Gerais. And today, the spirit that comes to us to tell us more about the truth is Kaibar Shuto. You remember when earlier in this program, probably a month ago, we had a message of his named Mediums and Mediumship. I am just opening here once again a little more about Carbarchuto. He was born in Rio de Janeiro in 1868, and he discarnated in the city of Matão in 1938. He was a spiritist, a politician, a pharma um, pharmacist, and a Brazilian philanthropist. He, the, one of the greatest thing he did was to disseminate spiritism through newspapers, magazine, and to date, the magazine that he created, the newspaper, both are still working, which is fascinating for us. He really helped since a younger age to be a disseminator of spiritism. And today he comes to you and I another day in which he comes to talk about the son of pride. Yes, that's actually the title of the message, the son of pride. Here, you're going to see we title it over sensitivity because it's the core of the message. He goes to the gospel according to spiritism, chapter seven, item 11. When he talks, when we read a passage by the Spirit, La Cordaire, in item 11, titled Pride and Humility. It's a thesis. It's a whole thesis about it. Because he talks about humility as a much neglected virtue. And later, he's going to talk about those who are proud. He says, pride is the terrible adversary of humility. We're far from it, aren't we? Yeah, because on earth, we're still giving too much room to pride. Too much. Today, Kaibar Shuto comes to teach us a lesson that is so truthful that if we pay attention, you and I are gonna live much better. He talks about the child of pride, what is the child of pride? A lion? No. Oversensitivity. He begins, and we ask, are you ready? When we talk about these things, we need to be fully ready. You and I, let me ask, am I ready? Okay, let me sit straight. And you too, you can be laying down, that's okay. Or driving, as long as we keep an eye on the road, right? He begins, the child of pride, oversensitivity, child of pride, propels the individual to place him or herself above the good of all. Oversensitivity is vanity that opposes the general interest. So when we, when the spiritist gets too sensitive, they consider themselves more important than spiritism and feel themselves above the liberating task that consoles and clarifies. Oversensitivity generates negative prevention, aggravating problems and accentuating difficulties instead of abolishing them. Oversensitivity is moral allergy, and it demonstrates ill 
will and exudes incoherence, establishing obscure diseases in the subtle tissues of the soul. Let us avoid certain this type of sensitivity, which has no reason to be. Just a slight observation is enough to find it at each step. Before we go through the cases he's gonna lay out, we're gonna go back to the beginning of the message. Do we feel oversensitivity? What is it, right? When we, something happens and we're hurt. Like we go to a store to buy something and then they say, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, the item sold out and then we're hurt start complaining the derivations of it. It's when we call a friend to do something together and they say, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't because I have this work to finish. And then we think, yeah, if this person were really a good friend, they would drop everything for me. See, what is behind it? The sense of entitlement, the sense of feeling above everyone. So above the good of all. It's when we visit people, when we're traveling, let's say we travel to visit family and we're hurt because the family doesn't stop to put a red carpet, celebrate as if we're kings and queens coming to town, which is, by the way, so said when we hear the news people making big fuss about royalty we say how sad we still have this thing on earth right people being treated above everybody else as if we were so different right we still sustain it it's the pride inside of all of us and we feel that we need to be treated in a certain way but when the spiritist becomes too sensitive, Karbashuto says that they are considering themselves more important than spiritism. Wow. Let's see what he says. For example, the director of the spiritist center one of the directors got his proposal rejected. And now this director feels discredited and no longer feel like attending the meetings, right? It's like when you say, oh, I think we should start doing a bake sale this way. And then the rest of the board of directors says, yeah, but, and then we say, we go home and we feel, Oh, they never consider my idea, never going to go back. That exists. Now he's going to talk about the medium. The medium is warned constructively by the coordinator of the session regarding his own, own mediumistic education. And the medium resents it and starts avoiding the meetings. We will say this, when they start avoiding the meetings, it's bad, but it would be even worse if they kept on going without resolving that feeling. Because if I go to a meeting and I'm resented with this, that, and the other, I'm opening doors to the spirits who do not want us to be united. So an observation here, of course, the one that coordinates, the one that everyone should make efforts to be better at communicating. Communicating with kindness, fraternity, and when we make a mistake, Barbara Schultz is gonna say, forgiveness. More, the person who gives the talk fraternally, Somebody made a comment about somebody in the center telling them to speak 
you know, not too loud. And then this person feels upset. The newspaper collaborator who sees the article rejected by new, the newsroom and feels underestimated in the activities in the press. This comment he's talking about, yes, the magazine that he started there, the newspaper, and, and some people really feel that way. Mm -hmm. The collaborator of social assistance who falls in indifference when her birthday is forgotten. <laughs> Kaiba Shoto knows about our human reality. We are just like that, aren't we? Oh, they forgot about my birthday and now we feel hurt. Are we really spiritists? The servant of the temple who was once overlooked in the composition of the table for spiritual action becomes disappointed and feels like a child who is injured. You know, certain in spirit centers in general, you have the mediumistic table and people sit around it. In certain occasions, people are invited to join in, you know? And then when people are not invited, they feel they are hurt. This is Kaiba Shoto talking about. Or it's when he says somebody who gives donations is not mentioned in the in the gratitude notes and then is hurt, dodging a new cooperation. Or the parent who is told about his or her child's behavior regarding the spiritist educational classes and the parent becomes sensitive and doesn't bring the child anymore. This has happened at the Spirit Child of Virginia many times. And it's sad because Nobody ever said anything bad, but we we're just trying to discipline. And the Spirit is outside of Virginia. We have uh, beautiful lessons that are now online because of the pandemic. And you can watch it with your children or grandchildren on YouTube or Facebook. The playlist is Cardiac Creative for Kids. And there you are going to find the beauty of these lessons. When they are in person, of course, because we have different age groups, we have some rules to make sure that everything goes well and it works so beautifully. But sometimes we see kids being agitated or saying stuff. So then we share with parents. We don't, there has never been a problem, but sometimes some parents are fine other parents, they feel hurt. They say, I, I don't want my kid to, 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 to come here and obey rules. <laughs> but spirit centers are places where we discipline ourselves. It's a school. Now, Kaiba Shuto is saying of youth who is warned or advised by somebody who is older, more experienced, and then that young adult, that young person is now frustrated and is rebelling against that warning of experience. Or the person who feels neglected when looking for in a friend the cooperation they need and that friend has to work like professional work, right? You and I work and, and we see the messages coming in, but we can't reply all too quickly because we have our daily things. Some people understand, some people don't. But Kaiba Shuto is saying that there is also that friend who doesn't approve of somebody's attitude or conduct 
they leave the center instead of staying there and helping those who need adjustment. So Karbashuto is saying the spiritist who refuses the fraternal aid only harms himself. The spiritist who refuses the fraternal aid only harms himself. We must forgive and forget if we want to collaborate and serve. Strictly speaking, now let's pay attention. Strictly speaking, he's saying, under the blessings of spiritism, who can say that he or she helps someone? We are the ones being helped always. These are his words. Nobody goes to a doctrine and temple to give first. All of us go there first of all to receive whatever the circumstances. Let us avoid the condition of human oversensitivity. Convinced that the honor resides in the tranquility of conscience, sustained by fulfilled duty. With humility, there's no oversensitivity that worsens. There is no oversensitivity that worsens the one who feels it without improving anyone. It is up to us to listen to the conscience and follow it, remembering that someone's susceptibility will always appear on the way. Someone who needs our prayers, however, short on apparently unnecessary. He's telling here to us, to finalize my brother or sister, Imagine if one day Jesus had resented our unceasing mistakes. So first of all, number one, oversensitivity comes when we think of ourselves too much, right? Our relationships will change dramatically if we just knew not to expect a special treatment or to meet our expectations just because we have them. And in a spirit center, he's saying, you and I, we go there to receive. Of course, is that a problem? No, but when we are serving, we are receiving. We're not at the level that we're giving, 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 giving. It's more for us than from, every, from anybody else. But he's saying, besides streaming around that feeling of, of being more than we are, because at the end of the day, love equality, we're all equal. We shouldn't expect to receive more to have our expectations, our expectations um, met right away. And he's saying here, the spiritist who refuses the fraternal aid only harms himself. Why is he saying this? Because we go to a spiritist center to learn. So it's also natural that we're going to learn with others who are there with us. All of us, no matter if we're the president of the center, the director of the center, we're all learning. And we would attempt to say that those who have certain responsibilities, like the directors, they are the ones who learn the most because of the engagement opportunities. The more I engage into those opportunities, the better it is. See? So, Kaiber Shuto is saying that we go to the Spirit Center to learn, to learn to do what? To collaborate and to serve. But to collaborate and serve and learn how to do it, we need to forgive and forget. <laughs> there is no other way but humility. 
he says, with humility, we heal our oversensitivity because we won't feel that we are above anybody, that anyone should be fulfilling our expectations. And he crowns the message with Jesus. Let's bring it to our daily lives. Let's say I look at my partner, my husband, my wife, my daughter, my son, my anybody in my family, friends, with expectations. I want them to meet my expectations. I get frustrated every day, right? Because I don't go there to be served to my house, to the center. I go there to serve, to collaborate. I may be helped, but I need humility to be helped. We know people who go to doctors and they say, doctor, look, I already know what I need. I just need you to prescribe it. They go to the therapists and they say, yeah, I know. I know I have this problem. And they don't do anything to change. When they receive recommendations, they don't see, they don't apply themselves. So we need a big dose of humility. Humility is saving grace. Yesterday, we were recalling a passage from the book Paul and Stephen, when Paul of Tarsus, the apostle, was approached by kind of a psychic man who wanted to know how he healed people and asked, can you please tell me what your talisman is. And Paul of Tarsus said, my talisman is selflessness and humility. That's our talisman. So if we want to be shielded by oversensitivity, which makes us disconnect completely from the superior spirits, we will not feel that sense of inner tranquility inside of us. To do so, we need humility. He says, let us avoid the condition of oversensitivity at home. When somebody doesn't do what we think, and then we feel outcast, we feel that we are not, we don't belong anymore. Where is our humility? Does it matter? Do we need a band playing for us every day, all the time? Because there are people who are like this. They can't be in the room and not be noticed. They can't be somewhere and not be noticed, not be talked to. It's okay. I go in and I listen. And I can be... Like Jesus, he used to be like this. Let's go to the book, Jesus in the Home, by Neil Lúcio Toshiko Chávez. There, we're going to find the reports of when Jesus himself was quiet. Everybody talking. And he was quiet. He didn't want to impose. He didn't want to overshadow anybody. He knew how to be a player, as we say, a team player with God. And you may be asking, what's the exercise for the next 24 hours, right? And you may say, yes, Vanessa, and I think I know which that is. It's humility. But how are we going to play humility here? We don't know. We need practical exercises. How do I... Play humility. Okay? So it's like this. If you are in a meeting, 
And that thought comes, oh, I need to say something or people are not going to notice me or they're going to think I'm dumb. Quiet yourself. Think. I don't need to leave my trademark like that because that's ego. Sometimes a family is talking and we need to give our 50 cent. But do we have to? Sometimes we don't. And it's okay, not because we're nobody, just because we don't have to. Everything we need to put our thing there, give our, we need to help when help is needed. But we don't need to leave a trademark. That's pride. And then you wanna leave a trademark, people don't let you do it, and then you're hurt. I'm hurt, right? So how are we gonna practice humility? By diminishing our feeling of self-importance. How? Thinking. I am a team player. That's how we practice humility. When we feel equal, I'm a team player. Somebody's speaking, I don't need to speak. Unless they ask me something. Unless I know something they don't and they want to hear it. Otherwise, I can just be quiet. They are talking about the birds in the sky. I know nothing about birds. I say, okay, I listen. There are people who give an opinion about any and everything. It's an ego thing. So the practice of humility here begins like this. Let us breathe in and out. Okay. Breathe in, breathe out. And feel. I'm a team player. Practice humility, allowing people, yielding to people, allowing them to shine without you feeling less. And think, we're a team player. Now he's scoring the goal. She's scoring the goal. And I am enjoying it. I don't need to compete with family members, relatives, friends, colleagues, neighbors, anybody. We're team players. And thus, we don't need to keep thinking, I'm so important, I need to leave a trademark. The exercise based on Parbarshutu, especially for those who feel like they're spiritists, goes a little deeper. It's about forgiving and forgetting when people don't call us for things that we want to be called for. Doesn't mean anything. It just means that for them, that's what they needed to do. It's not personal. Are you up to the task, to the exercise? Yes. You and I tomorrow, we're going to work in the next 24 hours from now till the next 24 hours, we are going to be working on our oversensitivity by diminishing our self-importance feelings, by feeling like we're team playing. I am a team player. That's the goal, friends. We thank you for being here with us for this current of the good that we're forming and spreading the good in our actions, and spending the next 24 hours feeling like you are a team player everywhere you go. Thank you, friends. See you tomorrow.